Hello, welcome to part three of my walk along uh, the, uh, where am I? South Dorset Ridgeway. I'm on um, Broncombe Hill, which you'll know if you just watched part two, where I uh, stayed the night. And I'm heading further west now along the South Dorset Ridgeway. I'm kind of doing it backwards. I always seem to end up doing these um, national trails or whatever they're called, long distance routes backwards. Uh, I think it's probably suggested that you start the other end, West Bexington, and the um, the more interesting parts, I think, are over this side, more of the uh, sort of stone monuments to come. So I think the, uh, the first thing we're gonna see up on that hill is the uh, Hardy Monument, which is not Neolithic, not Bronze Age, not even Iron Age. It's of course much more recent. We'll talk about that in a moment when we get there. It's worth spending a moment just to appreciate Broncombe Hill a little more. I only really saw sort of one half of it um, last night and uh, it stretches for uh, I think nearly a mile and is probably the largest concentration of Bronze Age barrows in the UK uh, in such a sort of short space. And so ever so slightly reminiscent of Teletubby land. Not to diminish the uh, the grandeur and majesty of it, but uh, you know, it's just that's what happens to come to mind. It's quite a nice path here. I've got the uh, company of gorse bushes to my right. Uh, another very smart dry stone wall, but a little bit crumbling this one. And um, Hawthorne on the left. It's interesting how they line up like that. Gorse on the right, Hawthorne on the left. So here we have it, the Hardy Monument. This was built in honour of a Thomas Hardy, but uh, possibly not the Thomas Hardy you're thinking of. We're in Dorset, and of course, Thomas Hardy, the author, he of Tess of the D'Urbervilles and Far From the Madding Crowd. Side note, madding is not a word, Thomas Hardy. It's mad or maddening. Anyway, um, it's not that Thomas Hardy, not Thomas Hardy the author, who was born in 1840, wrote all those books with the dubious adjectives uh, in their titles. This is uh, Vice Admiral Sir Thomas Hardy, is it in shot? Who served as flag captain on the HMS Victory, along with um, his chum Nelson at the Battle of Trafalgar. So he was the captain of the flagship and Nelson, of course, was the uh, Admiral of the fleet. I don't know any of this. I just read it off Wikipedia a few minutes ago. And uh, it is modeled on a spyglass, um, you know, a sort of naval telescope. And it was placed here by his family in, uh, I think they built it in 1844, if I remember what I read on Wikipedia a few moments ago correctly. And uh, can't help but wonder, the uh, spyglass shape there isn't a nod to his chum Nelson with the, uh, I see no ships. Or was it the other eye? I can't remember which one didn't work. And the uh, location was chosen partly because this, uh, this estate is the family estate of that Hardy family, not the author Hardy family, but also because it could be used as a landmark for shipping. And apparently you can see it from 60 miles away out to sea. So there we go, not Neolithic, not Bronze Age, but you know, hopefully vaguely interesting in its own right. And the, uh, the SDR continues this way and there's a nice old stone route sign here as well, which probably as it says, inland route there probably dates to pre-2003 when, uh, as I said in one of the other videos, I think the, what is now the South Dorset Ridgeway Trail was originally the sort of inland route of the coast path. If I'm quiet for a moment, perhaps we can hear a bit of bird song. That looks like a permissive footpath or something of that ilk leading to the Hellstone. So this 
is a long barrow, making it Neolithic. What a beauty! It dates to somewhere around 3000 BC, sorry about the wind noise. And it was um, reconstructed, rightly or wrongly, by uh, well-meaning antiquarians in the um, 1860s. I don't know if it was they or the local people who called it the Hellstone. There seems to be a kind of a running theme there with uh, these kind of long barrow and uh, dolmen sites uh, like the um, what's it called the devil's uh, the name escapes me I'll put it on the screen in uh, near Fifield Down near Avebury obviously in uh, Christian times these things were considered rather unearthly I think that is a beauty definitely worth the two minute detour. Now what I particularly like about Hellstone, Hellstones, is the way it's just in the corner of a field here. If it weren't for that sign down there, which is fairly subtle, I would have just walked right past it. Well, I knew it was there on the, uh, the map as well, but uh, you could easily, the, uh, the track goes along the bottom of the field there, you could easily just walk past that and miss it altogether bit hazy but nice views down to the sea there and uh, obviously doesn't come across on camera but there is a wonderfully rural fragrance at the edge of this farmyard suddenly the view opens up and better still this is Hampton Stone Circle take a quick look at the very weathered sign probably you can't see it with the uh, sun behind it there This is a Bronze Age and uh, somewhere between perhaps 3,000, 4,000 years old and it has been tinkered with sadly in more recent years and uh, this may not be very much like the original layout. And you'll notice that these stones are not particularly upright. They're, uh, I believe what archaeologists would call recumbent. It's a, a fancy way of saying like. I seem to be having battery issues today. I did. Uh, I, I tried to charge the spare uh, one of the batteries up overnight with my power bank, and it said it got to 100%, and then it cut off at 50. So I think it was lying. But anyway, just in case the previous clip didn't get a, a, a thorough look at Hampton Stone Circle, here's another extra bit of footage. with a view out to sea. That would be um, quite a spot to have your uh, your rituals or whatever people in the Bronze Age were doing in this space. I'm going to take a detour at this stage from the South Dorset Ridgeway uh, because there are two sites that are a little way off the Ridgeway that I'd like to see. Another Long Barrow uh, and another Stone Circle. And, you know, stone circles obviously the headline act when it comes to neolithic monuments or uh, perhaps it's bronze age haven't looked yet kingston russell stone circle and gray mare and her cults very smart sign must be new thought i got a glimpse of uh, gray mare and her cults just now but um uh, it's over there somewhere it's actually slightly off the footpath but once again there seems to be i'm guessing that's a little permissive footpath or some such but what a beauty and it's not quite on the West Kennet Long Barrow scale of Long Barrows but that is definitely a Long Barrow with an impressive pile of stonework at this end Grey Mare and her cults similar age to the Hellstones back there but presumably the locals who handed out the names so these ancient monuments consider this one less sinister so I'm not sure which of the stones presumably the large central stone there is grey mare 
and the other stones around it are cults. I don't know if this has been reconstructed in quite the same way that uh, Hellstone had, but uh, that is pretty impressive. And Long Barrows, as we know, are sort of burial sites, and there's evidence that the, uh, the bones would be interred and then possibly taken out and put back again for rituals of remembering the ancestors or something similar. Uh, it's a bit easier to imagine that at some point you could have actually got inside that than the, uh, the previous one at Hellstone. This is Kingston Russell Stone Circle and it's very uh, unceremoniously just sitting here in the middle of a farmer's field and you can see um, evidence that this land is actively grazed on and it's uh, we believe late Neolithic or early Bronze Age so it, it could be contemporary with the uh, the stone circles we see today at um, Stonehenge and Avebury but possibly slightly later I think they're generally dated firmly in the Neolithic although late Neolithic. Once again, like the Hampton Stone Circle. So this is this is a little bit older, probably. That's more likely Bronze Age. This is more likely early Bronze Age or late Neolithic. Once again, the stones are recumbent. That one in particular would look rather, rather nice if actually standing. But they're all lying down now. So you know, the effect is slightly lost. There must be a, uh, a temptation to uh, stand these back up again, as has happened elsewhere, including Avebury, of course. A lot of those stones were lying flat until uh, is it Aubrey or one of those uh, figures from the past came along and stood them up again. The, um, the hedges slightly obscure the view. There is a view out to sea from here. And, uh, you know, were it not for the, the cow pats and the, uh, the fact this is sort of pasture land today, and if it didn't have the old field boundaries and so forth, that would probably be quite a majestic spot. There we have it, Kingston Russell Stone Circle. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty good going for a Sunday morning. It isn't yet 9.30, thanks to my early start on Broncom Hill. And I've already seen two long barrows, two stone circles, uh, four monuments from either the Neolithic or the Bronze Age. Um, is pretty good so I have about an hour and a half now until there is a bus from West Bexington or thereabouts to get back to Weymouth and it being a Sunday they're very few and far between so I'm going to try and uh, pick up the pace a bit um, which may be easier said than done given the state of some of these tracks and if you can see the, uh, the extent of the mud from here I think I'm now following a short section of the uh, Macmillan Way to rejoin the South Dorset Ridgeway. It's quite a good looking hillside walking towards there and you can see off in the distance there parts of the Jurassic Coast. I'm rejoining the South Dorset Ridgeway momentarily. I've just come over the brow of this hill up from the uh, Macmillan Way, left that back there. And uh, what a majestic sight. Oh, it's a bit the light's not ideal, it's a little bit a little bit dull in places, but uh, with my eyes right here, this looks splendid. The, uh, the view of the coastline in uh, almost 180 degree arc. Wonderful. Spotted a bench over there. I think I deserve a break. I, uh, what time did I set off this morning? Was it 7.30? I can't even remember now. I've been walking uh, two and a half hours, something like that. The, uh, the chapel you can see on the little mount over there, sorry for fat fingers in the way, 
is St. Catherine's Chapel, and it was built by the, uh, the monks of the, the Abbey at Abbotsbury down there in uh, probably the 14th century. And this is, um, it's the St. Catherine of Catherine Wheel fame, uh, you know, the, um, the fireworks that sort of commemorate the cruel way in which he was uh, put to death by the Romans. The, uh, the plan from here is to walk the uh, South Dorset Way goes along there. I'm going to walk another stretch of it, but not all the way to West Bexington, I've decided. I think uh, the, the last monument of interest is Abbotsbury Castle. There's a hill fort along there. And I believe there is a bus stop by the hill fort, by Abbotsbury Castle. Um, I think I can get there in an hour. I've got just over an hour until the bus should pass through there. The X, no, X, whatever, it doesn't matter, does it? There's a bus that will take me back to Weymouth. So that would work really well. I'd get, I'd get one last antiquity in, and then I'll be in Weymouth for lunchtime, fingers crossed. Some more barrows along here. Are you bored of barrows yet? That was more a part one thing, really, wasn't it? The, the uh, round barrows or uh, what are these? Um, bell barrows, bowl barrows, ball barrows, uh, some one of the bee barrows. Approaching Abbotsbury Castle, Hillfort. Now, I don't know if you can just about make out the uh, trig point on the horizon there. Maybe the last South Dorset Ridgeway sign we'll see. It says there it's 17 miles. I thought I was doing a 13 mile walk. Hmm. Oh well. I suppose these are part of the embankments of the uh, Abbotsbury Hill Fort. It's uh, Iron Age, apparently. Um, I find it hard to get excited about the Iron Age. It feels like a period of history where the British were just sitting around waiting for the Romans to invade. I think I will just go up to the trig point there and I'm going to call that the end for me of the South Dorset Ridgeway. and truly tapped. I mean, you can see why this was a useful vantage point. You could see the Romans coming. Not that they'd land here, but uh, if they ever did. All the way along to Portland over there, the narrow um, isthmus, or whatever you call it, that links Weymouth to Portsmouth. Uh, Port <laughs> Portland, not, not Portsmouth. Uh, further along the Jurassic coast. That way I assume we could see Lyme Regis in the distance. So uh, in terms of the walking bit, I think that's me done. But um, if you want to hang on for another couple of minutes, I'll uh, perhaps take you to Weymouth and we can go see the sea there. See if I can find some lunch before I get the train back to London. This is where I think the bus stop is. Excuse the car noise, I'm by a main road. That's where I think the bus stop is, based on Google Maps. Um, there's no obvious sign here, but there are sort of, you know, road markings that suggest this is a space that a bus could turn into, so fingers crossed. Weymouth. Thank you very much to the uh, the X53, whatever it's called, Cosa something, Jurassic Coast something something bus. The bus. Uh, it's over there somewhere. Very grateful of uh, being ferried back to Weymouth on the bus. Uh, I haven't actually been to the sea since I've been in the area. I've been seeing it from a distance. But, um, I feel like I ought to go and stick my foot in the sea and then uh, it's just time to get some lunch and then the train back to London okay 
foot in the sea, wash the mud off. <laughs> ah, the pathos of an English seaside town out of season, which is about 11 and a half months of the year. It's actually pretty cold um, on the seafront and I'm wearing a three-piece tweed suit. So, um, you know, anyone, any uh, less technical attire than that, probably freezing. You know, um, good work. The family over there digging sandcastles in this weather. Thoroughly approve. Carry on regardless. No, we're not quite in uh, Devon or Cornwall, but a pasty somehow seemed appropriate. It's a Sunday, you can't be having fish and chips on a Sunday. Last year was a bit rubbish, but never mind. I think it is probably time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching that um, adventure on the South Dorset Ridgeway. But uh, famous, famous clock tower there. Um, see a bit of the Jurassic Coast behind me, probably. Oh no, maybe more of that way. Um, <laughs> let's face that way so we can see some ancient coastline. Um, I enjoyed that. I think there was. Uh, first bit perhaps a bit uh, slow on the ancient history a bit more barrows than anything else but then uh, second section pretty packed I thought with uh, Neolithic Bronze Age stuff so that was uh, that was great really nice scenery uh, weather you know on and off but some of it was good um, camp in the middle great so um, yes I enjoyed that um, I hope some of that was watchable thank you for watching see you on the next one bye from Weymouth